director of the CV Star East Asian Library at the Columbia University. And I'm uh, very happy we have so many people you know, come over here under the very busy holiday schedules. And we have a lot of people I know they have to go to second meetings and the second parties. So we're going to start right now. Our first speaker will be Anne D. Staunton, Vice Provost and the University Library. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. On behalf of the Columbia University Libraries, I thank you for coming tonight to this celebration. Today we establish the Zhu and Song Education and Culture Endowment Fund, supported by a Chinese entrepreneur, Mr. Chen Su, and his wife, Meng Zhen Song. The endowment will support the collection development, library administration, and other cultural and ex educationally related endeavors of the Star East Asian Library, one of the crown jewels of Columbia University. In 1901, a donation of $12,000 by Dean Lung, a Chinese domestic employee working in the home of one of Columbia's trustees, triggered the creation of the Chinese Studies Program the first Chinese Studies Endowed Professorship, the Dean Lung Professor of Chinese Studies. That endowed professorship, plus the establishment of the Chinese Studies Collection through the donation of over 5,000 volumes of a Chinese encyclopedia by the Chinese government in 1902, formed the foundation of today's world-class East Asian collection at the Star East Asian Library within the greatest academic research library system in the world. After almost 115 years, in the same spirit of Dean Lung, Mr. and Mrs. Xu have established the Xu and Song Education and Cultural Endowment and have made an important contribution to improve the educational and cultural exchange between the US and East Asian countries. In deep appreciation of their contribution, Please join me in a few moments to unveil the recognition plaque that is installed in this magnificent reading room, which is the first such plaque dedicated to a Chinese donor couple in this library's history. Big ideas like Columbia Global apply well to the collections at the Star East Asian Library. The magnificent collections and the expert staff led by the outstanding Jim Cheng benefit scholars and students not only locally at Columbia, but globally throughout the world. It is truly an excellent library, and Mr. and Mrs. Xu, your generous gift makes it even more excellent. Also, I want to thank Mr. Frank Xiao, President of the U.S.-China Friendship Council, and his assistant, Ms. Ting Zhao, for introducing Mr. and Mrs. Xu to us. We deeply appreciate your making such a great match. Thank you. Let me also express thanks to <laughs> Professor Haru Sharani, Chair of the Department of East Asian Languages and Cultures, Professor Eugenia Lin, Director of the Weatherhead East Asian Institute, and Professor Shang Wei for taking time for their, from their extremely busy schedules to join me and give their remarks for this important event. Finally, I would like to thank Cultural Counselor Lian Li and Cultural Consul Ping Wang from the Office of the Consul General of the People's Republic of China in New York, who made a special effort to join us for this momentous occasion. Thank you very much. Uh, our next speaker will be the Professor Hao Shuani, Chair of the East Asian Language and the Cultures. Uh, this is really a great moment, and we really want to thank uh, <clears throat> Mr. Xu and his wife. Uh, for this very generous uh, gift, uh, Shu and Song Education and Cultural Endowment Fund. Um, it's really thanks to people uh, like you that we have such a great uh, library. <clears throat> I'm just going to speak about two things. Uh, the relationship of our department, which is the Department of East Asian Languages and Cultures, to CV Star. Uh, uh, a library. Uh, 
we are in the same building. We're on uh, the. This is the fourth floor. I'm, I'm never quite sure whether it's the fourth floor or not, but um, no, this is the third floor. Uh, you can see I'm not always sure. Uh, we're on the fourth, fifth, and sixth floor, uh, so we're very, very fortunate to be in the same building. Um, the East Asian Library used to be in Low Library, which is a, uh, at the t come up in the plaza. You'll see that uh, looks kind of like a little presidential building, and we were uh, in the upper floor in a very, very small space. Uh, and the uh, I believe it was the chair of the department at the time, <clears throat> uh, Theodore de Barry. Uh, so it was very, very small space, and the department was together with the library, believe it or not. Uh, so the professors were sitting amidst the books. Um, and Stanford University made an offer uh, to Ted uh, Theodore DeBerry and to Donald Keene, so the most prominent person in Japanese literature and the most prominent person at the time Chinese studies. Uh, and uh, so they, Stanford was going to raid uh, Columbia of their two stars. <clears throat> and uh, Ted DeBerry asked as the counteroffer that he be given Kent Hall. Uh, <clears throat> this entire building uh, had been, was a law school. So you can see here. Uh, it's really not East Asian, it's uh, European. Um, and uh, believe it or not, uh, the department was given uh, uh, room in, the, in Kent Hall, and also uh, it led to the beginning of the East Asian Library. Uh, so this is a great moment. Uh, <clears throat> the other... Um, thing I would mention is that uh, the department uh, has been a great supporter of the library. Uh, and we've been generous, I think, with our contributions. Uh, our most recent one was uh, $33,000 for Korean painting, uh, <clears throat> restoration uh, for Korean painting. Uh, our department has uh, 25 Full fa full time faculty in East uh, Tibet, uh, China, uh, Korea, Japan, and Tibet, uh, and another over thirty uh, lectures uh, and uh, over hundred graduate students. It's a very large department. Um, we're very we work very closely with uh, the library, and without the library, I don't think we'd be <laughs> here. Um, and <clears throat> Donald Keane, whom I mentioned earlier as part of the uh, uh, counteroffer, uh, has been a great donor of uh, the library and has every year has given uh, <clears throat> both books and large uh, funds. And um, I just can't stress enough how important our benefactors are. Uh, we, this is one of the great libraries in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, both for rare books and for the kind of range of material uh, that we have. And we have a great director in Jim Cheng. I'm so glad that he's here. Uh, and uh, so I want to thank you again very much for your generosity. We really appreciate it very much. Professor Haro. And our next speaker will be the Eugenia Lin Professor uh, for Chinese History and the Director of the Weatherhead uh, East Asian Institute. Eugenia. I'm also uh, here to express my gratitude and thanks to Mr. and Mrs. Xu for their incredible generosity. Uh, and uh, their vision for supporting the study of Chinese culture and East Asian culture with uh, really such an invaluable gift. Uh, and uh, I I'll talk a little bit more about why it's so meaningful for me as a Chinese historian, but also a Chinese American who has long been curious about my heritage. Uh, but perhaps first, uh, I wanted to uh, 
just briefly talk as the director of the East Asian Institute. The Weatherhead East Asian Institute is, works closely with the library. It also works very closely with uh, the Department of East Asian Languages and Cultures in supporting the study of China and East Asia uh, throughout the campus. And uh, we house faculty who are in the East Asian Language and Cultures Department, but we also uh, house uh, faculty who study uh, Chinese law in the law school, who study Chinese business in the business school, who study Japanese politics in the political science department. So we bring together all the people who are very interested in East Asia um, on campus uh, through programming and through faculty support. Uh, and part of our mission is to support the library because I think as we all know, we're all academics, we are all scholars, we're committed to deep knowledge, uh, and integral to that, of course, is the cornerstone of that uh, is the library. And so uh, your gift is, is really impacting uh, faculty, uh, but also our students. Uh, and I think that's something I want to stress as well. I think this is uh, an increasingly uh, cosmopolitan student population on campus. Uh, students uh, are no longer just Americans, we actually have probably the growing uh, population of international students, my guess is China. <laughs> I'm, I'm not for sure about that. But what I find really fascinating, fascinating when the Chinese students show up uh, in my class or when they come to the library is that while they do have deep knowledge, I think uh, they read the same books that the American students do, but sometimes from a different viewpoint. Um, and I think the fact that they can all get together and share their different ideas and their different visions and understandings of the world uh, is actually a great learning experience for uh, the entire student community. It's a great learning experience certainly for me as a teacher. And I think your gift is going a long way to help uh, attract the best and the brightest students from China, from the US, from around the world uh, to participate in this very important dialogue about the 21st century, the world we live in. Um, I want to briefly say again my uh, thanks to Jim, who has been a wonderful director uh, of, of the library uh, in, in terms of really ensuring that we have the best quality benefactors who are really committed to uh, education and to East Asia, uh, and the Weatherhead's commitment to supporting the uh, library. Uh, we have a long-standing collaboration, and we're always excited, uh, especially Jim does wonderful exhibits, cultural exhibits and cultural events, and we're always very excited to support those, but of course we also also support kind of the nuts and bolts of running a library, acquisition, collection, <laughs> the stuff that's actually crucial for this uh, world-class quality institution to survive. Uh, and Weatherhead wants to continue uh, that collaborative relationship. Um, and finally, again, uh, just to end on a personal note, I am born and raised uh, in the United States uh, as a Chinese Amer American. My parents immigrated here uh, in probably in the early, oh gosh, 60s, uh, first from China and then to Taiwan. Uh, and I've always grown up uh, very much aware of my cultural identity. Uh, and when I went to college, this was very important. I was at Stanford University as a uh, Chinese American. Uh, that phrase was very new. I didn't know what that meant. Uh, but I think um, the kind of awareness, even as a Chinese American, of China only continues to grow among those uh, who have a similar background to me. Um, and, uh, uh, and as I said, we live in a global village. The 21st century is a smaller world. Uh, and we want to ensure that the Chinese students who come here and then the American students who come here and the Asian Americans who come to Columbia are really responsible cosmopolitan citizens. And a gift like yours really makes that possible. So thank you very much. Uh, our next speaker will be a uh, Du Family Professor of Chinese Cultures, Professor Song Wei. Um, oh, sorry. Um, <clears throat> so what, welcome, everybody. Um, it is my great pleasure uh, to join you today uh, in celebrating the establishment of the Xuan Song Education and Culture Endowment Fund at the Star East Asian Library. Well, this is a special occasion for us today. We all know how important this library is for everyone here today, right? Um, as a faculty, we depend on it uh, in teaching and research, right? This is 
the core of our support, life support system, right? Um, as we all know, uh, it takes years to build an excellent book collection like this one. It started at the beginning of the, the last century. And it also requires constant effort on our part to maintain and enhance it, right? Um, as individuals, we come and go, right? And, but the library will stay. It will continue to stay here, you know, so long as Columbia continues to exist and, and, and prospers, right? So I want to thank Mr. Xu and Ms. Song uh, on behalf of my colleagues and my students, and also on behalf of the future scholars and students who we sure will con you know, continue to benefit as we do uh, from your generous support uh, for the library. Well, this is uh, my uh, first time meeting our donors, uh, Mr. Xu and Ms. Song. But I can tell that we belong to the same generation, and we went to culture, you know, went to college after the Cultural Revolution. Um, and so, I, when I look back, I think our generation um, share some common experiences, and perhaps also we shared kind of a hunger for books. Uh, that developed uh, in the dark days of the uh, Cultural Revolution. We, you know, a lot of books were officially banned, and we learned literally nothing at the school. <laughs> we have to self-taught, you know, reading books and by ourselves, and and perhaps even we shared this um, kind of a bizarre experience of uh, transcribing books manually, uh, because that's the only way to keep a copy of the books that you know, we borrowed from our friends, we have to return on time. I remember a couple of these books um, and even make copy, you know, transcribe books off for my friends uh, as well. So, um, so the, uh, uh, this is kind of a, a, a labor of love now we can hardly even imagine doing nowadays, right? Uh, so with your uh, generous support and under uh, Dr. Cheng's uh, leadership, uh, I'm, I'm confident that our library, which is already in great shape, will continue uh, to thrive. Finally, I want to thank uh, our donors, uh, Mr. Xu and, and Ms. Song, uh, for your vision and your commitment uh, to the well-being of our library. And I know that words are not enough to repay your kindness and generosity. So um, Dr. Chen and I decided to uh, present you with a a book as a, as a small gift. Uh, here is the, um, this, is a, uh, this is a photocopied edition of a 16th century book, uh, uh, illustrated the primer of the Ming Dynasty uh, from the, uh, the real book collection of the Star East Asian Library. This is a 16th-century there are only two editions that uh, you know, nowadays. Uh, this is the earliest one, and the other one is in Taiwan, in, uh, in the Palace Museum uh, collection. Okay, and I wrote a long in preface to the book uh, to explain, you know, to, to trace its its history uh, and explain its uh, significance. Uh, and actually, this book uh, has something to do with the history of the East Asian studies here at the Columbia. Uh, Professor Goodrich, uh, who once served as a department chair uh, at Columbia, I think in, in 50s and 60s, right? Uh, he was the one who referred to this book in one of his uh, 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 articles. And he also provided an English glasses uh, of, to, the, to all the words included uh, in, in this book. Uh, so uh, according to him, this book is uh, arguably the uh, oldest illustrated uh, primer in existence, not only in China, but in, in the world. Okay, so I, I guess it's not, it's good to, to, to have a copy of it. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> The, the single copy in the world, the earliest illustrated learning books, you know, from China. And our next speaker will be the guest of our guest of honor, uh, Mr. Jing Xu, and also with his translator, uh, Ms. Zhao Ting. So, yeah, so you may, you may okay. Okay.
尊敬的哥伦比亚大学副教务长、各大图书馆总长安妮女士，尊敬的中国驻纽约总领馆文化参赞李丽妍参事。参事王平女士，好，尊敬的各大东亚语言文化系主任和日本文学讲座教授 Harry， 是吧？尊敬的各大东亚研究所所长林玉庆也是。尊敬的杜氏家族中国文化讲座教授商伟先生。尊敬的各大东亚图书馆馆长陈建先生，尊敬的各位嘉宾、女士们、先生们，今天非常荣幸的邀请到你们来各大出席各大东亚图书馆徐颂教育文化基金创立纪念铜匾的揭牌仪式。Dear Vice Provost and University Librarian, Ms. Anne Thornton, um, dear Mr. Li Li Yan, the Chinese Consulate General in New York, and uh, uh, dear professors from East Asia Institute of Columbia University, and dear Mr. Jem Chen, the Director of CV Star East Asia Library of Columbia University, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Today, my wife, Meng Jing, and I are very honored to invite you to attend the reception for the establishment of the Xu and Song Education and Culture Exchange Endowment Fund and Evelyn and Recognition Plug at, Univer at Columbia University and to witness it at East Asia Library. Goda Dongya Tu Su Guan, you draw Fei Tang Yu Jiu de Li Su. 创立于一百多年前，是美国历史上第一个以中文图书馆名字命名的图书馆，也是全美最大的东亚图书馆之一。East Asian Library of Columbia University has a very long history, founded a hundred years ago. Before it was called the East Asia Library, and it was the first library that named as Chinese Library in United States. Asia Library has been dedicated to Asian history and culture exchange. Chinese historians and many prominent politicians have been inspired by it, and have left their mark on it. It is one of the largest East Asian libraries around the country, and the Columbia East Asia Library has been committed to research historical documents and academic exchanges during the past hundreds of years. In China's history, many famous politicians and academic figures have left their footprints here, too. My father, who has always been focused on 教育工作，把今毕生的精力都奉献给了中国的教育事业。My mom devoted her whole life for education. Her value and experience really inspired my wife and I. 所以，受我母亲的影响，我和我夫人宋梦君女士很早就有个心愿，希望能在文化教育方面。So it really uh, wish that uh, come to Meng Jing and I's heart very very long time ago, that Meng Jing and I really wish to make a little contribution in culture and education field. Because education and culture is the most important part of human society and development, is the most important part of human society and development. Because in our mind, culture and education is a sign of civilization and the progress of human society. It is an important factor in the development of international community too. So, I and my wife agreed to establish the Chinese Library of Columbia University. 
徐颂文教育文化基金，以此寄望，我们能够为哥大东亚图书馆在东亚文化研究与发展上，以及在中美两国的教育、文化及友好交流方面，做出点微薄的贡献。And there should have no boundaries in culture and education exchanges. So, together with my wife, we made this donation today to fund Xu and Song Education and Culture Exchange Endowment Fund. Hope that we can provide more on research and development of East Asia culture field of the East Asia Library at Columbia University, as well as to make some effort to the U.S.-China culture exchange and friendship development. 我与我夫人能与哥大结缘，在哥大完成这个心愿，感到非常的荣幸与自豪。在此，我和我夫人，什么你，哎，站起来，介绍 ，My this my wife， 张东军女士。在此，我我与我夫人非常感谢哥伦比亚大学及哥大东亚图书馆，为我们夫妇提供了这样一个平台。Just as we saw, this is Ms. Song Mengjun, the wife of Mr. Xu Jing. Mengjun and I are very grateful to have you to be here. And thanks again for Columbia University and Columbia East Asia Library provides us such a great platform for us to do some contribution to the culture and education. Especially, I feel very proud of you. The Ga Da, 树立永久同变，给予了我们莫大的荣誉。And it's really great honor that Columbia University had made a recognition plaque, and to put it inside the library to recognize this donation, and we are very honored about this. 同时。在此，我要特别的感谢美国中美友好协会肖云飞先生啊，主席啊，和赵婷女士，为我们这次基金的成立牵线搭桥。And we want to express our special thanks to Mr. Xiao Yunfei, the executive president of China American Friendship Association, which is um, him here, and also uh, Ms. Zhao Ting, the general secretary of uh, this organization, who is uh, me, <laughs> for making this donation happen. And Mr. Xu Jing said if he was like 20 years old younger, so he can went to the Columbia University for learning some English so that he may not need translator someday. This is many, many young people, the dream to the become a student to Columbia University. Thank you. Actually, based on my knowledge, just a little bit of addition that Mr. Xu's English is very good, actually. So uh, at the end, he expressed his uh, thank for to uh, the counselor from United Nations and from the New York uh, Chinese consulate uh, and all of the friends that come here to, to witness this happen today. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Okay, that's our next ceremonial. Uh, the thing is for Anne and Mr. Xu to unveil the plaque. Back there. Hi.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here.